The gleaming skyline of the city is a living being with its chrome, glass and concrete extravaganza. Skyscrapers proclaim a city that has joined the ranks of the elite. But at what cost? Today, climate change is one of the most serious threats to our planet. And in this grave environmental crisis, buildings and urban constructions insidiously emerge among the most menacing offenders. Buildings use twice as much energy as cars and trucks, consuming 30% of the world's total energy and 16% of water consumption. By 2050, they could go beyond 40%, emitting 3,800 megatons of carbon, the main cause of global warming. Now in India, as in many developing countries, uh, some one quarter of our energy goes into buildings into making buildings and into operating them. Almost a half of our materials that we dig out of the ground go into the construction of buildings and roads and other construction projects. So it is a very large part of the cause of our environmental problems. So from that point of view, it's extremely important that we demonstrate that good buildings, comfortable buildings, productive buildings can be made using much lower cost and much lower energy uh, materials and techniques. Development Alternatives, a non-profit society set up in 1983, has over the last two decades pioneered projects on sustainable habitat and housing at the rural level, developing low cost and low energy technologies as an extension of their beliefs, way back in 1986, the DA headquarters was designed as a mud block building. The original dream, the vision that we had was to create a workplace where young people could give their best, their total creativity uh, to nation building. 20 years down the line, DA has grown to an organization with over 200 people, making significant differences in national housing for millions of people. The time for change was inevitable. So it was sad for all of us when we had to take the decision to pull it down. But it had to be done. It, I mean, it had to become contemporary. And we had to look at how that whole spirit of being in a sustainable building, a building that belonged to the earth, could now become more contemporary in real time. And uh, that's how this new building was then conceived. We had more people to accommodate, but we had the same you know, ethos that we had to maintain. So the story began of creating a building that took into account the impact on environment from each and every brick that was to be placed, to each drop of water that was going to fall on the land, to each and every ray of sun that touched the building, creating not just a building, but a living ecosystem. One of the challenges was to see how you can express a continuity of that ethos through this building. Uh, while you're making, you're actually inventing new technologies and you're scaling up the technologies that were developed, say, at workshops like that of DA and many other such organizations. <clears throat> but you're scaling them up to another level and finding a new aesthetic 
and trying to maintain that continuity across uh, from what has been their inheritance and what are their aspirations. After months of planning and brainstorming, the DA building started taking shape, looking extensively into each and every minute detail that would make it a carbon neutral building. From raw material, design, utility, environmental responsibility, traditional masonry and construction style. The idea being not to just create a green building, but a model for others to follow.